giving you the keys to reopening Minnesota, the group he wants vaccinated so life can get back to normal. What does it take to save a life? A good Samaritan out of Egan found out firsthand while pulling a driver out of this sinking vehicle. And he dreamt of being in the NFL but ended up going pro in something else. After being released by the New York Giants and and they had asked, hey, do you want to get a job? In this week's Their Calling, we meet a Twin Cities teacher making his own path while following his family's footsteps. It's Wednesday, May 19th. Care 11 Sunrise starts now. Good Wednesday morning. Your bags might not be the only thing getting checked at the airport soon. According to an airline blog, The Wing, the FAA sent out a message to airlines that they have the ability to check their passengers' weight before a flight. We know you might have some strong feelings after that one, and we want to hear your opinion. Send us what you think of airlines possibly weighing passengers. All you have to do is use the hashtag sunrisers. I mean, other than like, you know, your pay. <laughs> I don't know what you protect more than your weight. How much do you weigh, Chris? <laughs> tell us. So rude. Me, I'm an so even rude. two. I'll tell you that. An <laughs> two? even two. Yeah. two That's where a lot of people like to land. Like, you guys like to land at two. <laughs> you know, I'm like this weird talent that I have. I'm actually really good at like projecting people's weight. Like I'm good at forecasting that, which is weird. But uh, yeah, it's funny. Pretty interesting thing there. Uh, yeah, check in your weight. Imagine that on your next flight light out. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, you know what? Things are off to a damp start this morning. Wipers could be going off, not really due to any light or moderate showers we're seeing, just due to a very light mist uh, with some of this fog that we're seeing as well. So 63, that's our current temperature. It's a little humid out here. I hear the birds chirping. I'm seeing some bugs out in the Care 11 backyard. So it's definitely uh, feeling a little like summer this morning. Visibility falling at about three miles in St. Cloud, two and a half miles in Princeton, uh, just over a mile and a half in the Eden Prairie area. So keep that in mind with the low level clouds this morning. Temperatures will be in the upper 70s later on. We'll have some afternoon developing showers and storms. However, uh, you know, it doesn't look like a complete washout today. It's just this morning miss by lunchtime. We catch some dry time with clouds and then we do it again with some uh, afternoon showers and storms and that one a bit more widespread. Guy, you opened a can of worms. We all were talking in here. We want you to guess our weights this morning. Okay. Should be fun. Okay. <laughs> you did. All right. Uh, 532. Happy Wednesday. Pretty quiet out there. But as you heard from Guy, dealing with some fog in certain spots and some light drizzle. So plan accordingly for that. Maybe not a great day to bring uh, the motorcycle into the office or bike to work. Looks like we had a crash, though, pop up in Minneapolis. 35W southbound just before 94. I'll pop that up on a traffic camera and have an update coming up. If you're just joining us, let's get you caught up on your top stories in your morning rush. Three children shot in Minneapolis continue to fight for their lives. They are 10, 9, and 6 years old. One was jumping on a trampoline when she was shot. Another was in the back seat of her mom's car eating McDonald's. Their families and community members held a vigil last night, praying for them and pleading for the violence to stop. In a matter of hours, the U.S. House will vote on creating a commission to investigate the deadly attack at the U.S. Capitol. While virtually every lawmaker condemns the violence, there is a divide on how to get the bottom of what happened. The Republican leaders in the House want the commission to look at riots following the death of George Floyd. New this morning, the New York Attorney General says the investigation into the Trump Organization has turned from civil to criminal. The announcement comes more than a year after Trump's former lawyer testified the former president manipulated the value of his assets for economic and tax benefits. The Trump family has yet to comment on the new developments. And the Wild are returning to Minnesota today, all tied up, 1-1 heading into tomorrow's home playoff game at the X. After a dramatic overtime win on Sunday, the team couldn't capitalize last night in Vegas. They took the lead early second, but the Knights rallied with three unanswered goals. Final score, 3-1. to one. Puck drops at 8.30 tomorrow night. And that's your Wednesday Morning Rush. Roll up your sleeves, Minnesota families. That's the initiative that Governor Walls will highlight today. It's an effort to get more families vaccinated as we try to make a safe return to normal life outside the pandemic, like work and school. Your kids may be wrapping up their classes, but many will continue learning this summer. And now there is new funding to help students make up for such a challenging school year. Kaya joins us live. These summer school programs, Kaya, are getting a big boost. 
Yeah, Chris, a $75 million boost. It's to support Minnesota schools. Now, this money is was part of that budget agreement announcement earlier this week. In total, there's about $500 million in federal funding going toward COVID relief. Governor Tim Walz says the summer learning portion of that is an example of bipartisan commitment to supporting students and, of course, those important teachers. And specifically, this money will help cover the cost of tutoring, mental health services, field trips, innovative neighborhood programming, and much more. They've been incredibly adaptable. Our students certainly have been. One of the big pieces of it was, and the one we've been asking for since January, was to free up the funding from the American Rescue Plan. Now, not only is this for kids or younger people, but also for adults and certain uh, community programming. So, uh, Chris, if you wanted to take that clay pottery class you always wanted to do, now might be the time this summer. You know, ever since I saw Patrick Swayze in Ghost 30 years ago, it's been one of my dreams, so I think I'll get on that. Thanks, Gaia. <laughs> Never too late, Chris. Well, President Biden's goal is to hit 70% of people with at least a dose of a COVID-19 vaccine by the 4th of July holiday. Statewide, Governor Walls expects the state to hit that target before the country. We're at 61.7% currently of people who have at least a shot. And let's check how that breaks down in a number of people. It's around 2.73 million people eligible who have at least a dose. Now, 2.7%. 3, 4 million are fully vaccinated. The number of people vaccinated goes up and new infections keep dropping. That is a good thing. The two week moving average is just above a thousand cases per day right now. Now in our Sunrise Live, a man is lucky to be alive this morning thanks to the quick thinking of a stranger and first responders out of Egan. Now check this out. City worker Bill Hank witnessed the moment a driver jumped a curb and plunged his car down a hill into a pond. And without skipping a beat, Bill called 911 and then rushed into the water to help out. You know, all I could see was his car, the front end was sitting down in the pond there. Just knew he needed help and you know, I was the only one there. Pretty crazy. Yeah, the next moments were tense as first responders realized the driver was unresponsive. The doors were locked, windows rolled up, and water was filling the car. A firefighter helped officers Sean Farnham and Luke Nelson smash the window. They had just moments to get him out before the car was completely submerged. We knew as soon as cracking that it was it, a game. Uh, you had moments before that car went down. And this was everybody firing on all cylinders. Yeah, luckily the story does have a happy ending. Police believe the driver had a seizure, but he's safe now and his car was pulled from the pond in one piece. Now to hear more from these heroes, we have the story posted right now at carolevin.com slash sunrise. And you guys, we were hearing that the, the driver didn't know what happened until they woke up yesterday. Oh, oh my gosh, oh, yeah. No memory of that. How fast thinking though, and uh, part of many. Scary moments, but glad he's okay. Alicia, thanks. Guy, over to you with our one thing weather today. Yeah, you know, starting off the morning, a little damp, but high temperatures will be in the upper 70s today. We'll feel the humidity, and then we'll have some developing evening showers and rumbles of thunder too. And here's a look at that crash on 35W near University, blocking the right shoulder. You can see roads, they are wet out there, so take it slow as you hit the road. Well, as life returns back to normal, many venues and businesses want proof that you're vaccinated. A Colorado doctor's latest creation could be the solution to that. Jalisa Irizari shows us why. Inside this Aurora Rehab Medical Center. Let me see if I can find that. Uh, One doctor is proving. Uh, let's see. You don't always need medicine to find a solution. This is a shot of using the Immunoband to get into Madison Square Gardens. Sometimes the answer is a little more. They also required vaccination documentation. Physical. It's the only visible, wearable, verified symbol of vaccination that people can get. And hopefully it's a way that can help us all get back together. That's the goal Dr. Tashoff Burton has with his latest creation. You just basically put the phone on the immunoband. A wristband with a QR code that pops up a password protected site. And then it brings up documentation of the card. The server is encrypted and HIPAA compliant. Um, we have the pin code protection and we really work hard to, to ensure data security. A secure way people in all 50 states have bought into. Correct. 
purchasing a ban Dr. Burton hopes brings a peace of mind to a world looking for a solution. It's exciting and rewarding because it's a different, it's a different way of, of helping. Pretty interesting. I just keep my cards in my, uh, this is probably not a good idea, but in my car. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, where else? I mean, if you're not keeping yeah. it on your person, right? I mean, they can be taken anywhere. Right. Well, a near kidnapping caught on camera. How police say this little girl got away. Plus, more people are swapping the gas for volts and saving a lot of money. How much you can save plugging in instead of filling up. Then one of the biggest music festivals in the country is coming back this year. What you will need to get into Lollapalooza.